Hello friends, Satyendra here and in this video, let's talk about the multibody design approach and understand what exactly is this and why it is needed. And don't get confused between multibody design approach and top down assembly approach. These two are totally different with each other and these are there for different purposes. So in this video, first we'll talk about the multibody design approach. We will understand the actual concept and then we'll understand the difference between the multibody design approach and the top down assembly approach. And at last, we will understand the Creo capabilities. We will see how good Creo is to handle the multibody design approach. So first, let's understand the multibody design approach. So let's get started. And to explain it, I have two parts with me. First one is a sheet metal part and the second one is a solid part. Now, if you see this part, this is a sheet metal part. This is my single part. So I want to manufacture it, but due to some manufacturing constraint, I cannot manufacture it as a single part. So if you go for flat pattern, you get a flat pattern like this. So if you see this area, this is overlapping and this area is also overlapping. That means I cannot manufacture this part as a single part, but this is my single part. So now when you have such condition, you cannot manufacture this part as a single part. But if you split this part from here and here, and make this part three pieces, you can easily manufacture it and later on you can join it to make it a single part. So this is actually the need of multi-body part design. So if I go for my solid part, this part is also like that. So this part looks like a washer part, but this is not a washer part. This is a very big part. This is 50 times larger than a simple washer. So here I have two manufacturing constraints. The first constraint is this big area. I don't want to waste this material. And the second constraint is this part is so big that I don't have the manufacturing capabilities to manufacture the entire part as a single part. But this part is my single part. So in such cases, you get the need for multi-body design approach. So the multi-body design approach doesn't mean that you need multiple parts. The actual concept of multi-body design is you must have only one part. Within that part, you can have multiple bodies. So now you see, I splitted this part into three pieces like this. And then I converted each pieces into multiple bodies. So now I have three different bodies within one part. So if I save this part file in my working directory, it will generate only one part file. It will not generate multiple parts. So this is actually the multi-body design approach is you should have only one part file in your folder. Within that part, you should have multiple bodies. So it is the same single part file within that you have multiple bodies. So when you save this part file in your working directory, it will create only one part file in your folder. Now, once you split a part into multiple bodies, you can save each body as a separate part. This function is given here, but this is not to create separate part with each body. This function is given to convert a body into part for different purposes, sometime for generative design, sometime for some kind of analysis. Now, in case you need to have all the bodies separately as a separate part file, then you better go for top down assembly approach that is actually you needed rather than having multi body design approach. So this was the actual concept of multi body design approach, one single part with multiple bodies. Now let's understand the difference between the multi body design approach and the top down assembly approach. And for that, I will create a small top down assembly. And here you have two options. This option is for bottom up assembly approach and this one is for top down assembly approach. So go to create, give the part name, I will say P1. Go to default and say OK. Now activate this part and start creating the feature. So I'm creating a simple part. So this is my first part. Now let's create one more part. And for that, first you go and activate the assembly. Then go to create once again, say OK, OK, again go for default, say OK, activate this part, now create the feature, draw the sketch, Now 
So this is my simple assembly. Now just to differentiate these two parts, I will go to view and I will change the appearance of second part. So now you have two parts designed using top down assembly approach. So if you modify one part, let us make it 50 and make this 10, regenerate it, automatically the second part also updates. The same thing you see in this part also, if you change any value, all bodies update, but you have a clear difference between multi-body design approach and top-down assembly approach. If you save this file, it will generate three files in your working directory, one assembly file and two parts file. But if you save this file, it will generate only one part file. There is some similarities between both the design approach. Here also all the bodies are linked with each other and there also all the parts are linked with each other. But the actual concept of multi-body part is when you have a single part to be manufactured in different pieces, then you go for multi-body design approach. And when you have a multiple parts to form a component, you go with top-down assembly approach. So one thing you should understand very carefully that if you are going for multi-body design approach and looking each body as a separate part, then it is better to go with top-down assembly approach rather than going with multi-body design approach. One more difference between these two approaches is the data management. So when you create a part with multi-body design approach, you need to manage only one part file. But when you go with top-down assembly approach, you will be managing multiple files. So this was the concept of multi-body design approach and the difference between multi-body design approach and top-down assembly approach. Now let us see the Creo capabilities, how good Creo is to handle multi-body design approach. But before this, just for better understanding, let us see the same task in SOLIDWORKS. So here also I have the same design problem. So I cannot manufacture this part as a single part. See the same overlap is here. So I will split this part into three pieces, just like this. Now I have three pieces, so I can go for flat pattern for every individual pieces. And if I go for drawing, I can insert the complete body. as different views, isometric view and then we can insert all individual bodies separately with flat pattern inside the drawing. So I have this first body, projection view, isometric view and now I will insert the flat pattern of this body. I will select this body and then I will go for flat pattern and then I can easily insert the flat pattern for this body. Same way I can call the second body. This is my second body. I will insert all the bend views. Here you can orient the way you want. So, I will take this as a front view and top view this surface, say ok. Insert the bend views, I will take the projection like this and this, I will insert the isometry view also and similarly I can insert the flat pattern of this body, I will go with this body, go for flat pattern place the flat pattern and just change the angle 30 degree. So see how nicely SOLIDWORKS is doing this. Now let us move to the solid part. So here also I have the same part, I will split it into three pieces. Now I will go for drawing. I will place the main view first. And then we will call the individual bodies. I 
all three bodies are identical here so i will just place one body so see how nicely sortbox is doing the job now let's see the same thing in creo parametric so first you go to the sheet metal part so this is my sheet metal part now here you have a model tab so if you go to the model tab and go for split body it doesn't allow you to select the body that means this functionality doesn't work for sheet metal part in creo parametric but they have given this model tab in sheet metal environment so i'm hoping that this functionality will be added in upcoming release now let's move to the solid part so here the split body works very fine you can create the complete body you can create the sketch and you can split it into multiple pieces so once you split you get all the bodies listed here so this is body 1 body 2 and body 3 so when you create the drawing and insert the general view but there is no option to insert the individual body in creo parametric so this functionality is also halfway for solid part in creo parametric but i hope this functionality will also be added in upcoming release so creo is missing two things here first one is they should add the function of inserting all the individual body inside the drawing and the second one is the multi body functionality should work for sheet metal as well i should have the ability to insert all the flat pattern for each individual bodies so now you understood what is multi body design one single part with multiple bodies now you understand the difference between multi body part and top down assembly approach and you have just seen the creo capabilities to handle the multi body design approaches still creo is not up to the mark but i hope in upcoming release it will get all the functionality so that's it from this video now you can like this video if you find this video helpful and let's meet once again in my next video thank you